Welcome back, everyone, to our next episode in our first campaign on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And uh, if you didn't see the first couple of episodes, there's a link in the description that'll take you back to the beginning. A couple of updates, and they've been doing almost daily patches since this is the first playable campaign. There's obviously a lot of things that they're tweaking, and they're getting a lot of feedback that allows them to make fixes. Uh, they have allowed now to unlock the initial campaign years all the way up to 1930. Uh, so there's a lot available. Of course, we're not anywhere near that because we have to win other campaigns first. Uh, there's an increased AI aggressiveness in battle. They've made a lot of uh, tweaks to various things. You can also now move your ships between uh, between ports. So that's kind of a big deal too. And we'll take a look and see how that works uh, as we go here. So for example, Yarmouth, uh, you can see we've got one uh, cruiser, uh, one heavy cruiser, two light cruisers, four torpedo boats. And so there you can hit a right click right mouse button on port to move ships. So in Liverpool, um, we could actually select specific ships and say, okay, you know what, let's move. Um, oh, so we're moving from and to. Uh, so we start by selecting, we'll start by selecting Liverpool and we'll say, you know what, let's move uh, ships from Liverpool. Uh, we'll take the Devonshire and the Severn and send them to Yarmouth. Uh, so now in Yarmouth, we're going to have more ships. And so that's kind of how we can do that. It's pretty simple, but uh, certainly would be effective. And now you can see uh, the planned movement of those ships from one port to another. Some places we don't even have anything right now. So as I said before, I'm waiting until we get uh, the new shipyard size, which would be 11,500 uh, to start designing new battleships. I'm told that 11,250 is when the battleship hull gets longer and then allows for two funnels, which is kind of the main thing that I need right now uh, to be able to build the faster battleships that I want. So um, in the meantime, there is an available battle here uh, and it's again between single battleships certainly a fight that I would like to take on because I have not had a chance to take on any of his battleships yet. But of course, the question remains whether or not we'll even be able to engage because he will probably just run away. All right, looks like we might actually get a fight this time. He's firing at me. I don't see him yet, but I definitely see his fire coming at me. He's right over in this area. We'll watch and see when he reloads and he's able to fire again. We'll see that coming in. I don't know why he's got such a better ability to scot, uh, spot me than I do him. He may also be outrunning me, which is why he fired one time, but now he hasn't fired since. Ah, I was all excited there for a minute. Well, sadly, it didn't happen. That's okay. We're going to start building these new battleships. It's going to take a year to get them, probably, but uh, that's all right. So let's go ahead and advance to the next turn. We've got a must-fight battle. We're going to have two battleships of the enemies, but <laughs> we have to do it with a heavy cruiser and two torpedo boats. Not exactly a fair fight, but we might be able to at least sneak in there and maybe drop some torpedoes on one of his battleships. So we'll see. This is the kind of battle I'm honestly pretty content to run away from since he does it to us all the time so maybe we'll get lucky enough to make that happen okay we managed to avoid that one so the the runaway mechanic does work both ways for us uh, here's a convoy mission that's available um, two light cruisers versus a heavy cruiser I may not choose to fight that one uh, have we completed we have, and I'm actually going to already go ahead and start uh, the process of building that up again by another thousand tons, because we'll probably be in a place where we're ready to do that by then. But now let's go ahead and build a new battleship design. We can go all the way up to 11,500, uh, which is going to allow us to get either that big uh, funnel, which has, uh, what's that? seven capacity or two with a six capacity so that allows us to almost double the capacity that was available to us so i'm going to try and go as state of the art as i can 
Uh, we've got now got real rear tower three, uh, so that helps a lot. Uh, what main guns? We can go all the way up to 13s, but let's look at the accuracy. At 5,000 meters, we're talking 1.6%. At 2,500, we're 6.8%. But at this one, you've got 9.8%. So it seems like the sweet spot for accuracy accuracy is still going to be the 12-inch guns. So that's what we're going to go with. And the accuracy goes up even higher when you go down to one barrel. Uh, and what's the reload time on that? 71 seconds versus 107 seconds. Um, but, you know, it's also nice to have two. So, you know, I'm kind of torn. I like the idea of just single barrel guns just because it reduces the weight and allows me to build up the weight in other places like speed, for example. Um, nothing available of any of those yet. We are going to go with the balanced rudder. We're going to switch over to compound armor. But, man, you can see already that we're over on the speed or on the weight. Um, so let's reduce the range quite a bit here that's going to help uh, we could reduce the bulkheads as well I love the idea right now our max speed for our battleship is like 17 knots so even going up to say 21.2 is a huge difference uh, in available speed we do have enhanced reloading available it's going to add to the weight but um, how about heavy shells? It inc improves our range, improves our penetration and damage, reduces accuracy a little bit. I feel like it's worth it though. No change, no changes available in anything else though. Uh, torpedoes. We're definitely going to get those tubes as many as we can. They really don't add that much weight. We don't have any bigger torpedoes available or changes in pro uh, propellant. So really the only other stuff we can do uh, centers around secondary guns uh, and then armor. 8 inch guns are pretty substantial secondaries. I just don't think we can get them on the sides anywhere. Looks like f maybe fives no nope, we can't even do that uh, oh no casemate guns is what we want we can go up to six inch guns on the casemates we can actually stick some up front too which is kind of cool um i definitely want to put them on the sides that's getting us close on weight now although this looks like it might be a better spot. I don't know. I like the protection of putting them on the side like that. But what I want to do is I want to spread them out a little more. Like so. What's the, the difference in angle if we put them up here? Yeah, you can see it's just kind of a small angle. This gives us the best chance from the side. Okay, with the weight that I have left, I'm thinking of armor really can't do a lot in terms of armor I'm not too worried about the casemates in fact I'm gonna drop that weight down a little bit on those I'm not too worried if I lose those um, I definitely want to bring up the the belt armor if I can All right, and that, that's pretty much where we're at. We're at 9.1% uh, four weight offset. If we see if we can shift this thing back at all, we can't really. Um, what we could do is move the casemate guns back a little bit. And that gives us almost completely balanced ship. Now, we're still going to have a major issue when it comes to engine efficiency, 55%, but that's about where we're at with our existing battleships. And in this case, this will give us a significantly higher amount of speed. I might drop it down just a hair more. And it doesn't really change the engine efficiency a whole lot. But even dropping one-tenth of a knot, gives us a little bit more weight available 
All right. So that's what we're going to go with. And uh, the Royal Sovereign is going to be the, the name of this design. And I'll keep that name. I like the name. All right. Let's go with it. And we'll go ahead and uh, build maybe a couple of these. Uh, so you can see the comparison to our old ship. Uh, over four knots, what, 4.2 knots faster. Costs about 300,000 more, well, almost 400,000 more. Uh, go from nine inch guns to 12 inch guns. And we go from two torpedo tubes to six torpedo tubes. Uh, what is not to like? Uh, we've got a lot of money available. I'm gonna build four of these bad boys. And as many of you pointed out, we need to enable the add crew uh, selection there. The ship's crew will automatically be replenished at the start of the next turn, depending on reserves of the crew pool. Uh, so that's certainly something we want to make sure we're doing. Okay, uh, so those are going to take a while to build, uh, probably about a year. Let's take a look and see exactly. Uh, we've got another uh, battleship coming in in one month, but these are going to take 14 months to build that's an eternity when you think about it we do have one new ship on its way we lost one transport what's the available battle here uh, this is an interesting one it's four heavy cruisers versus three heavy cruisers I like that all right this time we're getting right into the action there's the Argonaut, the Lancaster, the Niobe, and the Royal Arthur. We've got four of them this time. I want to go into a tight formation. It improves accuracy. So does slowing down. So we'll watch that own cruise speed bonus start to go up as we slow down. We get that tight formation. That'll improve things as well. Because right now, pretty low chance to hit. I've got everybody firing on the same ship, at least to start. We want to turn so we can get our rear guns going. We've got 7-inch guns on these things. Eventually, we'll probably need to get in torpedo range to finish them off, but I at least want to try and get some, some damage caused this way. And, of course, turning reduces accuracy. He's turning away. I'm gonna go ahead and get the Lancaster firing on the second one. Actually, I'm gonna get Royal Arthur to fire on them as well. Go ahead and speed things along, at least for now. I don't think anybody's landed any hits yet. I haven't seen a single notification about damage or death. Which goes to show you how bad the accuracy is on these things at this time. Let's go ahead and start turning again. Oh, there's a hit. We destroyed the main tower on the lead ship. That's his flagship. Beautiful. Look at that. Black. Oh, <laughs> love it. We're going to start to close the gap a little bit here if we can. I'm going to get everybody firing on Atlantis right now. Strange name for a German ship, but okay. All right, we just took our first hit. We lost two crew members. We got everybody in tight formation. We got a 10.6% cruise speed bonus. I'm wondering if I drop to 13 knots if that goes up higher. Let's take a look. Moderate sea waves are hurting accuracy. The evening is hurting accuracy. Doesn't look like slowing down is gonna improve things any over where we already were. In which case we're better off to go slightly faster as that it makes it harder for him to hit us. I think he might be trying to run away now. He's going 16.8 knots. At which speed we will lose sight of him pretty quick. So I'm going to speed up and go in pursuit. 
So I've switched over to firing with HE because we've been pursuing him for quite a while and landing very few hits and most of the hits I was getting even with the AP were not doing a lot of damage. So I figured this way maybe we kill some crew members, maybe we start some fires and it seems to be working. We do have a fire raging on the deck which he's getting put out but uh, I've been able to cause a little bit of damage to one of his towers uh, and we are in pursuit <laughs> but even at 5x speed uh, I was off camera for about five minutes and we closed from 4.4 down to 3.9 so it's really slow going this pursuit but we are very slowly gaining ground on him okay so the the latest damage that I caused uh, you can see it's all happening on the back of the ship uh, but we're slowing him down he's down to 14 knots now uh, so it is having an impact so even if we just catch up and pick off one of these ships uh, that'll be a start. We can't even spot the other two at the moment. We've got them down to three and a half kilometers now. And these HE shells are causing some damage. It caused 70 damage that time. And we're killing crew members. We've, uh, we've killed uh, 16 of his crew now. It's not a lot, but it does add up. I'm going to switch back over to AP shells for a little bit just to see what happens now that we're a little closer. Did we spot his third one? We did. Now we're getting a little more frequent on the hits now and you can see the damage starting to hit uh, more parts of his ship. It's just a really slow process. He's changed, <coughs> excuse me, changed angles a little bit too. So this is kind of interesting. The Comoran is stopped. I don't know what that's about. I don't know why he would stop one of his other ships, but um, I'm gonna get two of my ships firing on him. I'm going to get everybody doing HE because I, I've been going back and forth between AP and HE and the HE is definitely causing more damage, at least from this distance. Now maybe when we get a little closer, we'll see. But now that he dropped the Comoran, we've got a second target here. Uh, I'm going to have these lead couple of ships go to one side. And then I'm going to detach the Niobe have them start going to one, the other side. And then I'm going to attach Royal Arthur with Niobe. So we'll have two little squadrons of two. And then we just keep trying to pursue. Eventually we'll get up here and we'll be able to nail them with some torpedoes. Ooh, there's a nice hit. Rudder damage on the Comoran. We're causing flooding. And that's all with an HE shell. Plus the HE gives us a better chance of maybe getting one of those uh, quick detonations. If we get really lucky. Alright, we're going to get everybody firing on Comoran for a minute here. we got to be careful because I don't know if he's got... He does not have torpedoes. Okay, good news. We're going to try to gang up on this one, though, for the time being. Argonaut's taking a little damage. Still, pretty much everything's hitting them in the rear. Oh, Argonaut's dropping back because of the flooding damage. All right, I'm, I'm going to switch again over to AP and see what happens. We'll keep going with HE with the other squadron. But I want to see what Lancaster and Argonaut do with AP shells.
That was an AP. No, that was HE, that was red. Although I was sure that came from Argonaut. Maybe just all the hits show up that way. All right, I think we may have the Comoran. They're at five percent and just kind of hanging on. We just need to flood one more compartment before he gets on top of the flooding. It looks like he's starting to get on top of the flooding, unfortunately. But he's pretty much dead in the water. I just want to take him down before he does too much more damage to me. Darn it, he's getting on top of all the flooding in those front compartments. We're pretty close to being able to put a torpedo into him, though. But Lancaster's taking some significant damage now. There, we got our engine repaired. We'll get speed going back up again. No, don't drop. Oh, darn it. Lancaster's going to drop back because of the flooding. Put a torpedo into him. Come on. There it is. That should be a kill shot. If not, Niobe's going to put one into him from the other side. We've got two torpedoes coming at him. He's trying to turn, but there's no way he avoids them both. Well, there is actually a decent chance he avoids them both. Nope, that one hit. That'll do it. That was really close. He darn near avoided both of those torpedoes. All right, we're back after the Atlantis now. The pursuit continues. We've got to be careful. We've had some dangerous flooding with both Argonaut and Lancaster, but thankfully we've been able to get on top of it with the, the pumps. Now we need to try and slow Atlantis down. They're going 15 knots right now. There's some flooding. It's minimal. It's three compartments. It's not going to be enough to cause a sinking. But it's a start. Should certainly slow them down. Yeah, it's got them down to 11 knots. They've got rudder damage too. What's going on here? There we go. Okay, so now Niobe's taking some damage, some flooding, so they're going to drop back in the order. But we're getting up pretty close now with Argonaut, and Royal Arthur's going to continue the pursuit too. We're getting close to being able to be in torpedo range. Just not quite there yet, but it's just kind of a death by a thousand cuts we just keep plugging away until we do enough damage to slow Atlantis down for a kill shot only going 12 and a half knots now and they're at almost half on structural damage but again I think it's gonna take a torpedo to finish them First torpedo might not have success, but at the very least, it'll um, cause them to maneuver, which will slow them down, which will allow me to get the next one into position. They've been hit 71 times for 1,500 damage. Well, that's, those are the hits that have caused damage. Come on, baby. Now oh, we got rudder damage. This 
see if I can turn and get a torpedo shot here. Ooh, that hurt. Come on, Argonaut, let's get one in the water. Ah, they're gonna they're gonna drop in the order now too, but hopefully they get a torpedo in the water when they turn. Come on. Darn it, they're not going to. Oh now they're gonna stay where they were. There it is. That one's gonna miss though. Atlantis is gonna avoid that one pretty easily. But now we got Royal Arthur coming up along the other side. If nothing else, we're getting some major hits on him now, too. And there's a torpedo that's going to strike him dead center and finish him off. No way they avoid that one. They're trying to, but it ain't happening. That's a kill shot. Boom. Bye-bye. Flooding all the way across the bottom. And then there was one. Now, Lippy's, uh, or Lip, is pretty far out there. This might take a while to catch. All right, the last one got away. She was just too fast for us, but we lost 64 crew, took out almost 1,200 of the enemy, sank two of his ships, major victory yet again. Uh, so we further deplete the German... Uh, heavy cruiser force. We've got three to one advantage there now. The battleships we still haven't been able to touch, but we're going to get that opportunity at some point. Let's take a look at where we're at on research. Uh, we're six months away from a lighter reciprocating system. Uh, we are eight months away from bigger torpedoes and four months away from uh, two large side gun technology. Financially, uh, I would like to get these transports up. We're only at 92% right now. Uh, and budget-wise, we can we can run a deficit like this for a few months, but it's not something we want to do long-term, that's for sure. All right, we are blockading him, and that is because uh, of the power projection. Once it gets to the point, I think, where you're like double their power projection or maybe even a little more, uh, you start a blockade, and that's where we're at. So... Uh, this is going pretty well right now. I'm feeling like maybe the Germans would be the greater challenge uh, for our next campaign, but I'd like to do a later campaign if I can. All right, so here we go again. It's going to be those same four. The Argonaut, the Lancaster, the Niobe, and the Royal Arthur. And again, we're taking on three of his cruisers, the Gneisenau, the Lip, which is the one we couldn't sink before, and the Prinz Eugen. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. I'm also looking at a convoy battle here, which I think we'll probably avoid for now. But boy, sinking half of his remaining uh, armored cruisers would be a big, big deal. And it looks like they're coming at us, so let's go ahead and, and do what we did before, which is um, a tight formation. Continue to go straight at them. And he's probably going to, yep, he's going to turn around and start running just like he did before. I don't think we know how fast they're going yet. But this is going to end up being an exact replica of the last mission, which is just basically chase until we get somebody. And we can see exactly where we're at right now because we're right on the edge of the 4.2 kilometer range of our three inch guns. Did already land a nice hit. But it was actually on the lead ship. Well, it's probably the middle ship. We can't see the lead ship. All right, the pursuit has been going on for quite some time. I separated all four of my ships into separate divisions 
so that we wouldn't have the issue of when one gets damaged too much, it drops back in the line. This way, everybody stays exactly where they are in the pursuit because I had one of my ships drop, drop to the back of the line and it set me back in the pursuit. Geniza now has taken quite a bit of damage, but again, it's a really slow process. The good news is they're uh, not as fast as they were. Hopefully, we'll be able to catch up to them here pretty soon. One thing that's been a bit, bit rough, uh, our lead ship, Argonaut, has lost almost 10% of their crew. So they're kind of suffering a little bit. Got some major flooding up front, nothing they shouldn't be able to handle. So now Niobe's coming up. But we have just been pummeling Geniza now. You can see we fired almost 4,000 shells at her. About to get into range for torpedoes. Nice now's lost only seven percent, seven point six percent of their crew. So we've actually lost more crew members on Argonaut than Gnaza now has. Now they also have a lot more crew members on board. They have a max complement of five eighty six, whereas I only have four sixty eight. Oh! They lost 30 crew in that explosion. But they're lot, about to lose a whole lot more than that. Love those flash fires. Alright, we're about to drop a couple torpedoes into them now. And that's going to finish them off. We're going to start firing on the, the next ship in order here. And as and now's down, let's try not to run into the sinking hull of that ship. Bye bye. I guess we probably get a gun straight. They'll be under the water by then. Yeah, Argonauts lost a lot here. This is the one that got away from us last time. So now we do it all over again. This has been a tedious process. I've tried to spare you the tedium of it by editing out some parts here. All right, we're starting to get some more damage on this ship now that we're getting closer. We're about uh, two kilometers out with our lead ship. They've slowed to seven and a half knots now, so we should be able to close in on them. I'm not sure we're gonna have the big gun shells left uh, to be able to get at Prinz Eugen this time. Because we need to be able to slow Prinz Eugen down to be able to get close enough to use the torpedoes. And I don't think 4-inch shells are going to do that. So we may only get 2 out of 3, which is still really good. As long as we keep ours afloat. Now Obi's been taking some hits, but they've usually been able to get back on top of the flooding. We're into 1.5 kilometers now. This one's pretty much slowed to a stop. They're at 6.2 knots now. I'm just gonna go straight at them. And we'll probably be able to put a torpedo at them when we do that. Okay, torpedo in the water. Not entirely sure if we're gonna hit them. But actually, if you think about it, this is probably the best way to do it because they really can't turn to the left or the right and avoid us. Because if they turn one way or the other, they're leaving the rear exposed. So I think we're gonna get a hit here. And we did. Whether or not that's enough flooding to sink the ship is another matter. I'm not sure that it is. Probably gonna have to come up alongside them to do that. If 
taking a lot of damage now, though. I just got to be really careful here because there's always a chance that we get an ammo detonation or something really bad happens. But if I can get one of my side torpedo tubes here to put the finishing touches, we'll be okay. We just got to make sure we hit them in the front and not in the same spot we've already hit. And it looks like we might do that. It's going to be close. As long as we can get one or two compartments here. Yeah, we got them. They're done. Bye-bye. Finally got revenge for the last mission where we didn't finish that one off. I don't think we're going to have enough to get Prinzoig in, though. Okay, so here's the total. We lost 117 crew. We did take some uh, damage to the Niobe. But again, 1,400 victory points to 10. Two more German ships taken out of the action. Bigger ships. Uh, so good, good, good stuff all around. I have a feeling this campaign is not going to last all that long at the rate that we're going. He's down to just four armored cruisers now. We took out four more German transports. There's just no way he can keep up with this. Look at the power projection at this point. We may not even ever get to see these new battleships uh, in action. Let's take a look at where we're at on things here. I think we've got enough crew for everything. You can sort your ships by the cost per month. We've got 11 months left on those battleships. I'm going to try to skip uh, some of these missions if we can to get to those new ships. All right, gun layout, we're one month away, four months away on the next torpedo size, three months away on special machinery. Uh, financial situation... We're still a hole in a hole by about $3 million per month, so at some point we're going to have to drop this down. But uh, transport capacity, we've been taking a hit lately. Uh, we've got a nice crew pool, although once our new ships are out, we're going to use pretty much all of that crew. So um, I think I will go ahead and drop back on the crew training just a little bit. All right, so there's the latest advancement in ship design allow for the mounting of up to two heavy guns on the sides of ships without causing stability problems. So now we can remove that, and what else can we research that's close? Hull construction, uh, we don't know what it is yet because we're only at 50%, uh, so we can't really see that. And, of course, submarine technology is not really a thing yet. How about we'll work on armor forging for a little while. I'm watching to see if he gets any new ships. Um, he repaired the Prince Oigan, but he's not getting any new ships out there yet. Two more transports taken out. We're just going to kind of keep advancing for a little while. Lighter reciprocating system, 4% reduction in engine weight. Uh, we're still at 2 million in the hole, so we got to be careful of that long term. All right, we don't have to do priorities. Um, it slows down research overall for technologies when we do that. So I'm actually going to remove those priorities except for torpedo size. All right, where are we at on our new ships? We'll sort by crew because we know that they're going to have big crews. They don't have as many crew as the older battleships do. Seven months to go still. All right, so this is a torpedo boat versus a battleship and a torpedo boat. Not feeling great about the odds, but darn it if we aren't going to try. It's a chance to get some damage on one of his battleships. So let's go for it. Okay, here we go. That's his battleship. Banzai! Or if you prefer, Leroy Jenkins. I'm going to turn off the torpedoes. Until we're ready to fire one. And hopefully he doesn't blow me up before I get a chance to get a torpedo in the water. We've only got two torpedoes. I'm not entirely sure we could sink them even if we wanted to.
All right, here we go. Oh, big hit right off the bat. Thankfully, he didn't didn't do too much to me here. All right. I think these torpedo tubes are on the side, though. So I've got to turn. I might sink before I even get a chance to put a torpedo in the water. Come on, baby. Oh, look at him. He's already turning away. That concerns me. He's already setting himself up for the angle to avoid my torpedo. There it goes. First one in the water. Oh, and we're going to die. At least let the torpedo go. Come on. Ah, it was going to miss anyway. Well, that was anticlimactic. I don't think it'll... Yeah, 62 victory points, 34 crew. I don't want to minimize the loss of 30 you know, brave British sailors, but in the grand scheme of things, really not that huge. Okay, so here's a example of one that I don't mind auto resolving to see what happens just because it you know if it goes badly not a huge deal but I might get a couple of sinkings without having to go through the pain of fighting the battle uh, so we took some medium damage to the heavy cruiser we caused medium damage on two of his so kind of a wash but he doesn't have the resources to keep repairing these ships like I do so that's the good news and we just took out six of his transports that time so, looking at our fleet now, I probably should be queuing up some more building projects. Uh, we are four months away from those new battleships getting into position. Uh, I think it's time to maybe look at a new armored cruiser design. Well, maybe not. We don't really have a lot of new technologies for the armored cruisers. Same with the light cruisers. I'd really like to get destroyers, but we're not there yet. So I don't think there's really anything to be gained with a new design right now. We just got to watch our financial situation. Let's turn off the focus on torpedo size. Uh, new cruiser design coming here. 4,000 ton heavy cruisers. So that would be the point at which it would be time uh, to design some new heavy cruisers. How about control station? Eh, we're not quite there yet. Okay, there we have it. New cruisers available. Now we'll design a new heavy cruiser. We can go up to 4,000 tons. I don't know how much that'll really change on things, but we can certainly get some more speed on these things too. But let's see where we're at on everything else first. We don't really have anything new with any of this stuff. I do like the balanced rudder. It gives better maneuverability. We'll get the Citadel going there. Uh, let's get the best towers that we can get. Helps with the accuracy. We can't get a large air intake funnel. Funnel with boats is the best one we can do, which has a six funnel capacity. Main guns, we can go all the way up to 11 inch, which is pretty crazy, but uh, I think we're gonna go eights and the ship's already overweight so uh, we're gonna have to drop range let's drop the bulkheads which always concerns me a little bit we can drop down to 21.4 knots which doesn't allow for a lot of armor But I think we'll go with that. That doesn't give me any. Yeah, it doesn't give me any secondaries though. Can we get five-inch guns on the side? No, we can't. Or fours. So we're gonna go with casemate guns, four-inch casemate guns. I'm gonna put just a couple on the sides, which means we're gonna have to drop the belt armor a little bit. We already have very little armor on this thing. All right, there we go. I may not even get to use these anyway, but how do they compare? So, uh, almost four knots faster, a little bit more in cost, slightly larger guns, no torpedo tubes, 
but that's okay. Nope, not those. Let's build a couple of these. We're not going to build many of them. Just build three, maybe. And then what will happen is once we get the new ships available to us, we'll start decommissioning some of the older ones in the fleet because they're costing us money. Uh, and the technology just really isn't going to be helpful for us moving forward. You can see what the cost is per month for some of these battleships like Ocean, for example. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scrap Ocean now and King George V, which doesn't even make sense because King George V doesn't become king till 1910. Uh, but that'll save us some costs. That'll free up some crew. And that'll get us some new ships to replace those old ones. And we'll still stay ahead of him on the number of battleships. I'll probably start scrapping some heavy cruisers next. Four more transports taken down. Uh, you can see the power projection at this point. We're almost at three to one now. I'm surprised we haven't gotten a notification that their uh, their leader's been fired. He's got modern naval formations researched. We're 15 months away from voice tubes with whistle. That'll help with communication. Armor forging. Mechanical armor forging. Let's go ahead and speed up that research a little bit. Okay, I think we've got our new battleships. Let's take a look at the fleet now. Uh, we'll, we'll sort these by size. We do. Um, let's take a look here. The first Royal Sovereign ships, all four of them right there. They are available. We're going to switch them over to sea control. So they'll be a little more available. It'll cost more that way. But now that we got those four... I'm going to go ahead and scrap a few more. Uh, we're going to start by scrapping a couple of these. Actually, all four of those heavy cruisers, the oldest ones, um, as well as these light cruisers and some of the torpedo boats. So let's take a look at that. Uh, that still gives us a 2 to 1 advantage on battleships. Better than 3 to 1 on armored cruisers. Still better than 2 to 1 on light cruisers. And still more torpedo boats. It thins out our fleet a little bit. But it also uh, helps us financially uh, to be not quite in as much of a hole. We've now got a huge crew pool. So I'm going to drop back on crew training. Uh, which will save us some money will drop back on transport capacity a little bit and now we are in the positive again now hopefully we can start seeing some of these new battleships in action very soon we're gonna have enhanced enhanced turret cylinder turret cylinders in two months uh, we are also hopefully getting closer for rangefinder and we'll have destroyer design for the first time uh, before too long we don't have destroyers yet I'm going to go ahead and invest another ton into building size. That'll get us up to 13,500. Our power projection did go down a little bit with the reduction in our fleet. Come on, give me some battleship fighting. All right, um, King Edward VII, Majestic. Uh, those are two of our new ones. Let's take them out for a spin, shall we? Okay, here's our first look at the new battleships. Beautiful. Just single turrets. But they should be more, much more accurate than the old ships. And they certainly have more speed. The problem is, I think, what we have here is... Uh, we've got the Emperor of India as one of our old ships... So we're going to detach them because they don't have the speed that the other ones do. And now we can get these two up to 21 knots. Now let's see if we can catch somebody. Well, they got away. Our battleships will have to fight another day. That's all right, though. We'll get our chance. We got enhanced, enhanced turret cylinders, which give us a 5% bonus to turret traverse speed, which is nice. Uh, nothing else real close. Shells were 52 months away from armor-piercing cap. Um, we could reduce that to 22 months by doing the research. Focus. German Empire lost seven more transports. I don't know how financially they're keeping up with this. we got a 3-to-1 advantage now in victory points. 
Full attack. Oh boy, he's sending two battleships at us. We've got two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, three torpedo boats uh, to fight with. Our first chance to take out a German battleship. Hopefully he doesn't run. Well, another disappointment as his battleships elude me once more. What we're going to have to hope for is a battle where we spawn right next to him and get right into it. But four more transports lost for the Germans. They just don't financially have the ability to keep up with this. I just don't see how they could. Um, we're 1.2 million in a hole on average, so we're going to have to uh, drop what we're spending a little more. I think we can drop on crew training a little bit. I want to keep my tech budget up because I want to be able to uh, stay well in advance. That's kind of always my tactic in any game where there's technology involved is to always go for the best tech possible. And so that's going to happen here too. One-on-one um, -on -one cruiser battle, I don't think so. Same here. I don't think I really want to do this. Although it's a chance to use the, uh, the new battleship, so maybe we will try this. See if we get lucky enough to actually engage the enemy here. Maybe we'll be there right away. Nope, not going to happen. Okay, we have shells coming in from the east. So we're going to have a chance to use our new battleship. Here we go. Alright, so in this case it worked out nicely because we had the transports, which meant he wanted to get at those transport transports, which means he actually came in to engage. We don't have any ships other than these three here. So I'm going to put the uh, torpedo boat on AI for the time being. I mainly want to have an opportunity to use the Majestic here. I'm going to turn around this way, which means we're going to have to swing those turrets all the way around. But his other ship's back here somewhere, and that's the one I think I want to get at. This is just a light cruiser here. We'll get the Devonshire. Actually, we'll keep them going right the way they are right now. Let's so make sure they're on HE. Same with Majestic. All right, Majestic. Let's use these single 12-inch guns and see what we can do. One hit with an HE with a 12-inch gun might be enough on these 1890 light cruisers. There's a hit from a six inch gun. Oh yeah, buddy. There's a 12. Actually didn't do nearly as much damage as I was hoping for. Though it started major fires in the ship, and maybe we can get lucky and one of those can lead to a uh, ammo detonation or something. Although on a light cruiser, I don't know. But 629 damage. We've got a 10% chance to hit. We don't have a lot of shells. We only have about 200 shells. Kind of wishing I had gone with a larger amount of shells, but we're only firing two at a time, so I mean that gives us what 90 salvos. Come on, baby. Hit him again. We haven't spotted the other ship yet. I don't imagine it's real far off, though. Because it's firing. We have 12 torpedoes on the Majestic, too. Those will probably come in handy when we come up against a heavy cruiser. I'm 
I'm gonna slow the Majestic down, see if we can get that cruise speed bonus. We've got pretty smooth waves. We also have a 14.9% bonus for crew training, because we have a regular level of training. Can't get any higher than that without fighting battles, though. Devonshire, come on, get up there. How fast is this thing going? He's going 15.7 knots, so even at a slower speed. I got a 20% 20, 20 cruise speed bonus for slowing down. Even at a slower speed, I'll still be gaining on him just slightly. I got a turn to get my rear turret firing. Oh, big hit. Nice. That one caused some flooding. there's another big hit. I mean, we're causing major structural damage, but not causing a sinking as fast as I would have liked. I'm going to switch to auto. It may stay on HE anyway. But I'm really surprised that these 12-inch shells aren't taking him out faster than that. I'm just glad to have some decent accuracy for a change. We didn't have that on our older battleships. There's another big hit. That's four hits with the 12s now. I still don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, we got four hits for 2,200 damage with the 12s. Might let the Devonshire finish them off and speed up and try to go after this heavy cruiser. He's hiding in all kinds of smoke right now. Yeah, you're not going anywhere, buddy. The real test is we're going to see how that battleship does against the heavy cruiser. Man. The light cruiser's been a lot tougher to take down than I expected. He does have torpedoes, so we got to be careful here. Okay, we put one in the water just now, but now so did he. Turn, baby, turn! No, I don't want to end the battle yet. I want the heavy cruiser. I don't know if we can catch it, though. We're certainly going to try. Did he stop firing? He did. He must be getting away. All right, we finally spotted him. He's 5.4 kilometers. Dead ahead of our battleship, which can now open up. gonna take a while but we've got that that 12's got a three percent chance to hit which honestly is pretty good at 5.3 kilometers once we identify them we can see what their speed is but it's obviously not as fast as we're going so it's nice to finally have a battleship they can keep up all right so they're going 18.3 knots means I am going to slowly but surely catch up, which my old battleships could not have done, but the new technology coming in handy here with a ship that can actually run down a heavy cruiser down to 4.8 kilometers in closing. I don't think we've landed any hits on them yet, but when we do, those 12s are going to do a number on him. He's got um, only a half inch of aft belt armor. 
4.9 inches of main belt armor. Nothing on the aft deck. Although I don't know if it'd be plunging fire on the deck from this distance or not. Maybe. We're still at only 4.3% chance to hit. I've only got 138 shells left. So I do, do want to be a little bit careful here. So just an update here. We've been pursuing for quite a while. We are less than three kilometers away and we haven't hit the Blucher once. Not a single time, despite the fact that we've got about an 11% chance to hit with our 12 inch guns. Uh, the six inch guns, only 1.9% chance. And a lot of that stems from just the angle we're at. Those are on the side. So we're down to 2.8 kilometers, still haven't been able to land a hit. And a little disappointingly, uh, the torpedo boat obviously can't catch up any faster than the Majestic can because they're really similar speeds. Torpedo boat goes 21.6 and the Majestic goes 20.4 right now. So pretty soon though we're gonna we're gonna catch up. We're down we're at 14 percent now. But still not a single hit, which you would think with as many shells as I have fired at that percentage. One of them should have landed by now. We still got a hundred shells though. 2.6 kilometers in closing. Heavy cruiser can't catch up because they don't have the speed that the battleship does. There's a hit. First one over pen. Okay. We might want to think about, at least for now, maybe using HE. Did we do anything to the speed? Nope, still 18 knots. Didn't really do much at all to anything, really. All right, there we landed a big hit with our 12-inch uh, gun. It was a uh, 229 damage main belt penetration. No, we're not going to end the battle. And we've caused flooding and back-to-back -back hits all the way along the bottom of that ship, and that's going to be enough to sink Blucher. Beautiful. After all of that pursuit, it was two shots in a row, and boom, she was done. I love these new battleships. Big, big difference of, over the old technology. That's how much of a difference technology can make uh, just in a short period of time on this game. You can see the victory point totals now. I'm really surprised that the um, campaign's still going. And my thought process is that uh, once I do complete this campaign, we'll go for a longer and more significant challenge. Um, and there it is. I think we've we've won this. Uh, I thought I agreed to it, but war continues. Um, I'm going to play a couple on my own just to advance the uh, unlock some new years. And I'll probably do a British. I'm thinking a German campaign 1910 start uh, for the next one. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to get that unlocked. Uh, let's look where we're at financially. Uh, we're doing good. We're kind of breaking even at the moment. Uh, Germany's not really building any new ships. I just don't think financially they can afford it right now. Um, you can see how few they have. All right, it said again, they want a, a peace treaty. Should we accept? And I'll hit agree, but it keeps the thing going. Peace sign, there it is. Oh, okay, so we've actually got a settlement uh, that we can make here for the peace treaty. So I guess we're starting to see some of the um, the signs of what is to come. Because obviously in the final version of this game, you're going to be able to go through times of war and times of peace. Diplomacy, there's going to be multiple nations uh, that you could end up at war with. And so you can negotiate settlements afterwards. In this case, uh, we can make them turn over some of their ships, which is something that happened historically uh, that they had to do. We could also demand an actual um, territory from them. Uh, I mean, I don't think it matters in this case because I think the game ends anyway. They've agreed to pay the following reparations, 109 million in funds. No provinces, no ships. That's fine. But the campaign has ended. A minor victory for us. You can see the total ships that were built. Uh, what we lost, two light cruisers, two torpedo boats. Uh, what we sank, two armored cruisers, two... Uh, or, I mean, eight armored cruisers, eight protected cruisers, 16 ships total. So, 
That was a quick campaign, obviously. Uh, not a real great challenge. But like I said, I'm going to work on this on my own. I will get uh, the German 1910 campaign unlocked, and we will start that one in two days. Uh, so we'll keep on going with every other day. I should have it ready by then. I'll try to do this on my own. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.